nation of America has a hidden history that most people aren't really aware of. There's a lot of conspiracy theories and a lot of ideas, but in reality, America, we have we have evidence that America, uh, before it was called America, that it was known as this great western hemisphere. Okay, the western hemisphere, that is what was prophesied by Plato. You had, uh, you know, even the Greek biographer Plutarch talked about uh, voyages to this great land in the ancient world. So really, you got to get past this whole American mindset of Christopher Columbus and the Native American Indians. Uh, governor DeWitt Clinton, former uh, governor of New York, he was also uh, a pre- held a, pre- a prestigious role at the uh, New York Historical Society. And he said on record that they had come into contact with ancient fortifications on our soil, and these fortifications were evidence that there was an advanced civilization far exceeding that of the Native American Indians right here in America. Now, this was, you know, this was on record with DeWitt Clinton. When you consider the fact that the types of news we get today versus the type of news that was, you know, in the early part of this nation, it's totally different. It's all fake news today. All of it. All of it. All sides of it that you're gonna that you're gonna get on TV. The old news that we found, we found articles, we found all types of information showing that there was an ancient civilization here before the Native Americans. That there was this idea of serpent worship on this continent, and Plato himself, which Plato is a worldwide household name. Everyone knows who Plato is. Major occultist. Uh, democratic mindset they believed that in the end times there would be a great nation that was going to rise up in the western hemisphere again the western hemisphere is the key the great nation of the western hemisphere is going to rise up it's going to take its rightful place as the beacon of light that was going to rule the world it was going to bring about a philosophic empire a one world philosophic empire and it was going to be utilizing the creeds and the beliefs of the old pagan world. What does that mean in modern terms? It's going to be a resurrection of the old religions, the Babylonian mystery schools, the secret societies, the gods of old, possibly a reference even to the 72 fallen angels. You know, when you start talking about the, uh, the divine council, that there was going to be a resurrection of these things, a revival of these things, but specifically that this great nation, now when you look at the nation of America today, we literally fulfill so much of what the scripture teaches about this great whore of Babylon. And we break all this down in our film, specifically so people can see history lined up with scripture. Why doesn't America show up in the Bible? Well, we believe it does. But you have to have eyes to see and you have to have ears to hear. You also have to have a better understanding of this nation, America. Now, let me take you back to some of these ancient views of America. The idea was we were going to be that nation that was going to bring about this democratic commonwealth to the world. Democracy, that was the goal of the ancient philosophers. Democracy was actually an occult view. Now, this might shock some people watching this video, but democracy is an occult view. It's all about bringing together uh, a certain type of system. Now, you start studying the end times, you find out it's a beast system that's a control grid set up for everyone to be living under one basic ruler. Now, think about this. The Native Americans... We have, re- uh, we have evidence now that Native Americans that were here, not all of them, but by large, they had secret societies that were literally ancient forms of Freemasonry within their Native American tribes. Satanic rituals, uh, blood rituals. Uh, we even have evidence of underground kivas, temples, which I'm sure you're familiar with when you get into the whole Four Corners conspiracy. All these things taking place on American soil. But interestingly, we find out that the God who they revered and worshipped, you know, Again, not all of them, but by majority, we're dealing with a serpent god, a plumed, feathered serpent god. The same god shows up in Mexico uh, under the name Quetzalcoatl. You go down into Quiche. um, In Quiche, they called him Gukumats, and then in uh, in Peru, they called him Amaru. Amaru is the root of the word America. Amaruka literally translates over the land of the plumed serpent. Now, when we get into Ephesians and we understand what spiritual warfare looks like, uh, Paul tells us we're not wrestling with flesh and blood. We're actually wrestling with principalities. Okay, these are fallen angel entities over nations, over land, over different areas. These are, these are the things that affect what goes on underneath. These are fallen, by the way. These are not good entities. These are, these are the higher entities that are in league with Satan. Now, I believe that the plumed serpent god is literally Satan himself. 
So when you consider that we are living on a land, a massive land in the Western Hemisphere, that the ancients all prophesied was going to be the land that was going to lead the world into a worldwide global democracy that was going to be a beacon of light bringing about all the old religions and schools of the world. That really makes more sense now that we understand that our, our nation has been revering and worshipping Lucifer long before the Native Americans got here. They inherited these things from the giants, the white giants that were here before them, the advanced civilizations. And I'll even say this, uh, Sir Francis Bacon, who I believe Francis Bacon uh, was William Shakespeare, he penned the book The New Atlantis. He believed that this land called North America, he believed that this was the site of the original Atlantis. He also